Hello, everyone, and welcome again to On Tour. It's the cricket program where we look back at Sri Lanka's tour of the West Indies. A day that started with perhaps all four possible results ended in a draw with the West Indies in Sri Lanka. First test, draw. We move on to the second test starting on Monday. Let's have a look at the scorecard. Of course, Sri Lanka, 169 in the first innings, and then that mammoth total of 476. The West Indies replied with 271 and set 375 to win. They finished on 236 for four. Tremendous innings from Nkrumah Bonner. He made 113 not out. His first test century, congratulations, congratulations to him. Uh, only in, what, his third test match, and he's done quite well. Kalmeris showing some level of consistency. He made 52, and in fact, the two Bangladesh boys, they took the total uh, from what could have been a bit shaky uh, there at uh, 78 for two. It's 100 to, to 195, and that partnership was worth 105, and they really batted quite well. Craig Braffitt, he made 23, and, of course, Jason Holder coming there 18, not out. So the West Indies drawing the match, and it was uh, perhaps a game that looked certain to be a draw, just, I would say, just before T. Uh, once the West Indies didn't lose two or three quick wickets, uh, they decided, look, it doesn't make any sense. Let's call this off. And it finished just a little bit early. Uh, with me, of course, is our panel, Sir Clive Lloyd, the former Ghana and West Indies Test captain, Phil Wallace, the former Barbados and West Indies Test opener and one-day opener, and, of course, Johnny Barron, or BBC International Correspondent. Gentlemen, uh, a draw. Would you say that's a, a fair look at how the Test match really went, Phil Wallace? Yes, Barry, we say that was a good decision. Uh, when you look at the way how this Test match has, has, has been played, it's been played with, in tips and turvy. And obviously it came down to West Indies today, they're batting sensible uh, and, and pulling off a, a very good draw, continuing from their good batting performances in Bangladesh. And they would have, this, this performance today, would have really given them confidence going into the second test match. And speaking of going into the second test match, Johnny Barron, someone can still win this series. Will they be thinking, the West Indies or even Sri Lanka, that it's still very possible to try and win this series on that kind of surface that looks very much to me like it's going to be good for batting in the second test? Your thoughts, Johnny Barron? Yeah, I mean, well, you go into the uh, deciding match, the series all square with all to play for. I think Sri Lanka will take enormous heart, having had a terrible year where they just won one game in 13 games. To get a draw out of this position, I think Mickey Arthur and the team will be absolutely delighted, especially cons considering they were completely and utterly outplayed in the first couple of games. It could be a fascinating matchup, but plenty of positives for West Indies to take away, especially the fact that there were no major alarms for them on the final day. Sir Clive Lloyd? Yes, I think it was an excellent um, performance um, by, the, the, by the players. It's, it shows that we're now, trying to, we're now trying to get a good middle order. And um, I was, I was quite, quite impressed with the way Mayors and Bonner batted. And um, mm -hmm. they showed, you know, they, they didn't panic. They just batted intelligently, you know, and it's great to see our, a young player who's now playing an insert test match, can chart such a wonderful 100 in a very tight situation. You know, um, and I, as I said yesterday, once the, we, had, we didn't lose any um, wickets before lunch, that we, we, we would we'd be in a good position, and the guys played very well. But I must agree that this pitch was, a, was well prepared. Yeah, it was well prepared. It was pretty much a, a balanced kind of surface. Kudos there to the uh, curator and the staff at the Sivirvichu Stadium. Now, fellow uh, Nkrumah Bonner, I feel so proud and happy for Nkrumah Bonner because I remember Nkrumah Bonner coming to live in Barbados practically, young Jamaican, and he was, of course, a product of the Combined Campuses and Colleges. And an interview I did with him that I pulled up uh, some about 13 years ago, and and Krumah Bonner said his number one priority, for the, if he perhaps never even um, went on to play 15, 20 test matches, he said all he ever wanted to do was to score a century in a test match. And he said that 13 years ago when he started playing for CCC. And it was a dream that he was able to see come to fruition today. How good did this youngster bat today in Krumah Bonner? Well, Barry, first of all, I'd like to say congratulations to Krumah Bonner. He missed out in, in, in Bangladesh, 
But he came back here in Antigua, North South, and he scored a, a wonderful 100. When you look at the way he constructed his innings, I said yesterday he has a problem with his left foot. It doesn't really go to the ball, but he has good temperament. Actually, he waits to the ball and he plays it on his eyes. His hands are still away. But when you look at the way how he, he, he really weathered the storm and forced the Sri Lankan bowlers to bowl at him, and the way in which he executed his shots as well, his scoring opportunities that he took, you can see there's something about Bonner. He's well focused. And 13 years ago, he said that he wants to score Test 100, and he scored it. He's lived his dream. A lot of us are living our dreams, and the reality will soon be there. And for him, it's a dream come true. And I hope that he continues to look to score more Test 100s uh, for West Indies, because what he has done today is rescue West Indies from a very ticklish position, and he really right. brings the ship into the port. And I commend him, and as well as Kyle Mears, who continues to show that intent. And here, Bonner have formed a good relationship in the middle as batting partners. And that is something that needs to be highlighted. How freely Kyle Mills scores. And then you see a total transformation in Nkuma Bono. So there is a chemistry in there. And let's hope that that chemistry can go for a very long time for Bonner and for West Indies cricket. I, I come to you, Sir Clive, about Kyle Mears. Because, you know, after scoring that 210, there was the fear that, whoa, was this a fluke? Is this young man going to be consistent or, he, or is he going to be... Uh, a one-off wonder like many before him, um, Kurt Edwards, for example, even Dwayne Smith at the test level. Um, he made 52 today and looked quite good. Your thoughts on the innings of Kyle Mears? Well, I, I thought he played extremely well. Um, I, I, could, I could never say if you make a double hundred as a fluke. Um, that, <laughs> that is one hell of a fluke. The point is, is that this guy batted well, you know. And he batted well today too, for batted in the first innings. And he's getting there, you know, it's obvious that people are trying to work you out and, and where to bowl to you. So now you will have to try and try and find other scoring shots and so on. But he doesn't look ruffled. He looks a good player. And what's one good thing about uh, these guys not going to Bangladesh, we've exposed some youngsters and they've come to fruition. So really and truly, that's wonderful for our cricket. And they look like these two guys will be in there for a long while because they're pretty young. I, I want to come to you, Johnny Barron, about the dismissal of Craig Braffitt because that seemed to um, upset many of the fans, of course, who were logged on. Uh, they're watching on here on Flow Sports and also online. Um, talk to me through this dismissal of Craig Braffitt. What was going through his head, do you think, uh, to play that kind of shot at a particular stage when the West Indies... Uh, we're, we're looking quite sad. Yeah, it, it was an interesting one. It, it, it struck me as he got sort of caught in two minds. He was looking to come down the track and almost sort of bottled out of the shot and ended up sort of walking past a straight one. And it was a, a fairly critical stage of, of the game, you would say, halfway through the, the first session. He'd done the hard work as well, hadn't he? But just grinding out 23 runs off 124 balls. He'd done, done you know, all the, the major work to set up uh, the defence of the, of the game for the West Indies and uh, just a momentary lapse of, of concentration in the end. All right, you're watching Flow Sports. We're going to come back after the break. Don't forget, you can send us your comments and questions on our social media at Flow Sports on the Flow Sports app. And of course, uh, all on all platforms of Flow Sports, the YouTube channels as well. Don't forget, like and subscribe for more content. So again, send us your comments and questions on our social media at Flow Sports app on all platforms of Flow Sports on the YouTube channel as well. And you can send us uh, uh, all of your thoughts. Do you think the next uh, 11 should be changed? What are your thoughts on the particular team, how they played and the captaincy of Craig Braffitt? We want to hear from you. Please send us in your thoughts on that. We'll be back on tour to look ahead now to the second test. Stay with us. So welcome back then to On Tour. We move ahead now to the second test match. Of course, it starts on Monday. Same time, same place, same channel, Flow Sports. And we're going to just look at some of the players now and perhaps give them a quick rating out of 10. Let's start with you, Phil and Wallace. Craig Braffitt, out of 10, his performance in this test match. And you can include the thoughts on his captaincy as well. But obviously with his batting, Barry, I thought that he forgot to play at the ball. And for his batting, I would give him about a four. I think he's a lot better than that. And I want him to understand that when he goes to bat, he's a batsman. Captain C. Barry, I would give him six. 
I think uh, the, the, the surface, again, uh, was not really conducive uh, to, to, to seam bowling and eventually were five seamers. I, I thought his field placing too was not too bad, although at some stages he could have attacked a bit more and seized the opportunity. But I think that for his captaincy, I give him six, his batting, he'd get a four. Uh, and, and he would obviously know that he has to improve in the second test match. The turnaround time is not, it's, it's, it is a lot of turnaround time. He needs to really come on the ball, come Sunday and get it right in both areas. Johnny Barron, uh, John Campbell, out of 10. Yeah, well, John Campbell's had a, a bit of a tough game, hasn't he, um, at the top of the order? And he might, to some extent, be looking over his shoulder, but I, I, I very much doubt they make too many changes in a two-test match series. But certainly, the way in which he got out yesterday, he'll be disappointed. And uh, really, you know, what, what the West Indies are looking for is just those really solid starts at the top of the order. So how much you give him out of 10, then? Ah, well, <laughs> let's go for a five. A nice even five. <laughs> I hope I, I would love you to be marking my papers. Oh my goodness, Johnny, you're very generous. Um, let's go to Sir Clive. Sir Clive, uh, at number three, this is an easy one. And Kermit Bonner, out of ten, how do you rate him? Bonner, boy, that he's class. He's pure class. And the point is that um, batted well in the first innings, batted uh, and he batted like a champion in the second innings, and. Um, you know, held the things together. And this is a young man who's now starting out his career. He's now, he now, uh, um, now, he now ha he has 100 in three out of three test matches. And if he continues to play like he is, within, he, it's an intelligent looking um, cricket. And he, he now knows how to, to, to get a hundred, how to, to chart a hundred. So I would, I am very, very impressed with him, and I think he's in he's in there for quite a while. And um, oh, he's got to get nine out of ten. Nine is uh, I think that's a very fair a very fair um, rating. Uh, we come down the order at number four. We've got Kyle Mears, Philo Wallace, out of ten. Well, Barry, I like to see him bowl a bit more. I thought his bowling. Um, yeah, I would give him about a six and a half for his bowling. He got two important wickets, but then he didn't press on look to, to pick up any more and I think he needs to, to do some more work and the captain needs to trust him as a, as a bowler I think with his batting Barry he continues to show his class yes he scored a double hundred on Debu in Bangladesh I don't expect him to score a double hundred every innings but what I expect to see I saw in this test match intent purpose commitment and the ability to push those balls away and for his batting Barry I will give him a seven seven okay um, at, number, at number five Jermaine Blackwood He's all yours, Johnny Barron. Well, I think you have to give Cut Jermaine Blackwood a little bit of slack. He, he scored that match-winning 90-odd uh, against England in that uh, incredible chase of the Aegeus Bowl in the summer. Then, of course, he followed up with runs and big runs as well in New Zealand and got a score in that first test in Bangladesh. Yes, his form has fallen away in the, in the last couple of games, but I'm sure he'll come good. He's a talented young man. I give him... On the basis of this performance, on the basis of his, well, should we say that his performance across the last eight months, I think he's still worth a seven in this side. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jason Holder, that's, a, that's your man. That's your man, Sir Clive. Well, yes, Jason performed extremely well. And, um, he, you know, he got five wickets in the first thing, bowled quite intelligently. Um, he can bat. He's one of the best slip fielders we have. And um, yes, he, you know, I don't think you have to worry about the captaincy situation. He's there, he's in the team and he, and he contributed. How do I give him eight? Yeah, eight out of 10, I think that's a good score. Now, fellow Joshua De Silva, let's more look at his keeping because he only batted once, um, got a half century, looked really good. So you can judge that if you want, but his wicket keeping, I want to hear you rate his wicket keeping out of 10 in this test match. I think he's still learning the job, Barry, behind the stamps uh, on a difficult surface again in, in uh, at North Sound. But said in different bowling <laughs> for some of our bowlers, I, I thought he handled himself quite well. You know, he, he, he's not he's not the, the, the finesse type of keeper that we are testing seeing. He's not a, a David Murray or Jeffrey Dujon or even a Courtney Brown. But he, obviously, he, he, he's handled himself quite well with the gloves. And for his weight keeping, Barry, I will give him a seven because I still think there's there's some room for improvement uh, for Joshua De Silva. 
All right, and we come down now to the, the bowlers. Uh, let's, let's look at uh, uh, Cornwall, Johnny Barron. Oh, Racky and Cornwall, I think, bowled fairly manfully on a, on a surface, to be honest, that got slower and slower through the, the duration of the game and got deader and flatter. I think to pick up three wickets in that, uh, in that second innings against Sri Lanka was a pretty good effort. And bear in mind, of course, there was a drop early on and that would have, of Tiramani when he was on 18, that would have made a, a significant contribution. And you have to look at his figures, actually. He's averaging six wickets a game at the moment in Test cricket. A lot of those, of course, have come in the subcontinent, but I think he's still a very effective player. And of course, those 60 runs in that West Indies first innings, imagine where the game would be without those runs. I give him a seven. Uh, we come down. Yeah, you're right. You're very right. We come down now to Azari Joseph, uh, Sir Clive. Yes, I'm. I, I'm a little worried about this young man in the sense that, you know, um, I, I don't know if they're thinking he's an all-rounder or he's a fast bowler. I want to see one. So my my um, fast bowlers being aggressive, you know, short balls and make people. Um, uncomfortable at the crease. I, I, he's just there. He's just put, well, as I, I, I said earlier, Malcolm Marshall. We used to call it pitting, putting it there. We want some aggression from our fast bowlers, and um, I think he can bat. And the point is, is that you just just can't come and play shots like that. It is just settle down. And if you 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 got, you got nine tier in a test match, so he can bat. Um, I think he's got to do a little bit more um, for, for me. Um, but I still think he, he's he got pace and he's got promise. But I need he needs to be handled properly by some senior fast bowler. I would give him a six and a half. Six and a half, okay. And fellow, finally, um, I'm going to leave the two fast bowlers to you before I go to Johnny for the wrap-up. Ray Roach, Ray Gabriel, for this test match. And then I'll ask Johnny to overall rate the Sri Lankans, the whole team, and their performance out of 10. So the last two are yours for the West Indies, Philo. Well, by the way, look at Kimar Roach. He's the star of the show. He's, he's the leading uh, West Indies fast ball in that squad. And he's the leader of the fast bowling unit. And he put his hand up and, and he bowled wonderfully well and, and got the results that we were looking for. And it's good to see him actually in the wickets again and looking him looking his own, own self again. Uh, I would give him uh, Barry for his bowling, uh, an eight for his batting. I would give him two and a half because I think he's a lot better than that. Shannon Gabriel, Barry, straight off, I give him four. I think that Shannon Gabriel, as a professional cricketer who's been around our team for quite a long time, not nice to see him coming into a test series that is so short, so so badly out of form. And people are saying quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. But I think that Shannon needs to look a bit, look a bit deeper at himself and, and try to put in some extra work to get himself ready for test match cricket because the secure environment and COVID-19 pandemic has changed a lot in relation to preparation. So a lot of preparation has to be done by the players themselves. So for me, Shannon had a very, very poor test match. And if there's any change, Barry, I, I would drop Shannon Gabriel and I would play Jamal Warrigan. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I think as well. Uh, quickly then, uh, let me get from you, Johnny Barron, give me your assessment of the Sri Lankan team uh, in 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Well, they started slowly, didn't they? Getting bundled out for, well, 160-odd in that first innings, but came back very strongly in that second inning, scoring a big 400-plus. They've got big scores in four out of the last five test matches. The problem with Sri Lanka is, is stringing these kind of performances within a game together. Embel Denyer was a little bit of a disappointment, just three wickets in the test after taking 15 wickets against England. I thought Lakmal was absolutely superb throughout, but uh, Nisanka, brilliant. Tiramani, brilliant as well. And Dick Weller, well, he'll get 100 one day. All right. Wonderful stuff. Well, look, when we come back here on Flow Sports, we're going to just get the gentlemen's final thoughts on their 11 for the second test. And we're going to hear from the man of the moment, the man of the match in Krumabana. You're watching On Tour on Flow Sports. Welcome back then to On Tour for the final segment. Well, in Krumabona, what more can you say? Fantastic innings, 113. Let's hear from him about what he thought about the innings and, of course, the match. Um, it's truly special for me. Um, this is my childhood dream and I'm really happy I get this monkey off my back. Let's talk a little bit about the construction of your innings today and your approach. What was your plan before the start of today? 
to bat? Well, um, personally, the first innings, you know, I'd, uh, my foot wasn't moving as much as I wanted it to. Um, I did some work in the nets with, with the batting coach, obviously. I want to say thank you, for, thank you to him. Um, Sri Lankan bowlers are very disciplined, so it was important for me, you know, to construct my innings discipline and keep the ball in the V as much as possible. Yeah, you stayed all the way to the end to ensure that uh, the game uh, came to a draw. Along that journey, what would you say were most challenging for you as a batsman out in the middle? I think Lakmal was really challenging. I think he bore real good areas. He has real good skills. You know, all of them pose different challenges, but obviously he was cut above the rest. And you spoke about this uh, maiden test match century bringing your childhood dream coming to reality. And I'm sure along the way it would have been a culmination of your hard work and a lot of people who supported you along that journey. Care to mention a few names who would have contributed? Well, obviously there is a long list. Um, I would say Dennis Garden, um, Michael Donegal. Um, there is so much, man. I just want to say thank you to everyone. Congratulations to entering Kruma Bottom winning the Man of the Match, which included a five-night stay at any Sandals destination uh, around the Caribbean. He should definitely enjoy that. All right, gentlemen, first of all, Philo, in 30 seconds, you said it earlier, you're dropping Gabriel and you're bringing in Warwickan. Do you think that the West Indies um, selectors will want to tinker with any other changes? And do you think that the pitch conditions will remain the same for the, that second test? Well, the second test match is at the same venue. I believe they use a different surface, Barry. Uh, when you look at Shannon Gabriel, he, he was just not up to scratch for this uh, first test match. The second test match is, is do or die. And I think we needed the extra spinner. On walls was not as effective as we would, would like. There's still a question mark over John Campbell, but the reserves, uh, who you're going to replace him with. And Jermaine Blackwood uh, needs to obviously understand that he is a senior batsman and needs to play that way. If not, there's Darren Bravo there waiting. But where do you bat Bar yeah. Darren Bravo? You're going to bring him down into that middle order with Jermaine Blackwood? So I think the only change I would be looking for is to, to shift Shannon Gabriel out and bring Jamal Warrington in. And Johnny Barron, from the Sri Lankan perspective, would they want to make any changes to their eleven, perhaps extra spinner? What do you think about that? No, I think they'll they'll probably go in with the same side actually, and because I thought the bowling attack did pretty well, didn't he? Lakmal bowled beautifully in that first innings, and uh, also Fernando two wickets in in each innings, and Emil Denia. They'll be looking to get a little bit more out of him. You have to say in that in that second test, but uh, from a batting perspective, they all fired, didn't they, in that second innings? And Tiramani, of course, a brace of fifties in the game. I think uh, they'll take great confidence from this uh, performance, and it'll be fascinating to see how they perform in that second test. So, Clive Lloyd, your thoughts on the eleven for the next test? Well, I, I, I as I said earlier, I, 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 we need some variety. Um, it's the same old, same old sort of sort of thing. Um, we've got two off spinners, and you have. Blackwood and the and the captain, but if we have Warwick and we have something different, the ball going the other way, and then he can bat. So and it is a bit more agile in the field. So that probably would be the only change I would want to make. But then again, we have to think of of the opening position, and is it Blackwood out of form or 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 because you know we have guys here who are batting, you know, have Bravo batting very well. You have hope batting very well. But what I would like to see is that in their nets, it seems that this left hand cricket from Sri, um, Sri Lanka, it can give us some trouble. So why don't we have in the nets, the left hand, two left hand guys bowling to our batters? Um, yeah, that perhaps, might help. Perhaps and can, I uh, Sheldon that, Cottrell perhaps can come and bowl with them. Yeah, but whoever, and hope that we can get Two of our two guys making hundreds in the, in the next test because we've done, we've had three hundreds in the one days. Let's try and up the ante in the in the test last test. All right, wonderful stuff, gentlemen. I want to thank you so much for your excellent analysis and remind you, if you're watching, of course, on Flow Sports, you can send us, uh, you can send us your comments and questions on our social media at Flow Sports app. It's right there on the screen on all platforms and our Flow Sports YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Again, send us your comments on the social media at Flow Sports app on all platforms and on our Flow Sports YouTube channel. And you can like and subscribe for much more content. That's a wrap for this test. It's on to the next test starting on Monday. If you can't watch it live here on Flow Sports, please join us for On Tour, the highlights and analysis show. I'm Barry Wilkinson, goodbye for now.
time to jump up, people, are you ready? 